host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Shaping Success Morning Coffee. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, it is the day after Christmas, the day after Christmas Day. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Um, it has been, where'd my chat window go? It has been, uh, it was a little interesting, you know, for me. And I started going through a lot of emotions and things like that and, and just realizing how, you know, Christmas kind of affects some people. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to kind of say thank you. There's a couple things on my mind. Um, number one. We lost a friend on TikTok, passed away on the 22nd, Michelle Carroll, the duet queen, Jersey, Jersey girl, um, friend of mine that I had met, you know, through, uh, through TikTok and she's a great supporter and, you know, the last year has been really tough on her or was really tough on her and I just got to hope that she is in a better place now. You know, I mean, I think that it was really tough. She suffered from a rare form of muscular dystrophy. Um, and I started talking to her, and, I'm, and you know how, like, you can put on your profile on TikTok that you support this mus muscular uh, dystrophy, or you can put whatever you want to support. And ever since I met her and kind of heard her story and talked to her and listened to her, you know, she joined us on One Drink Wednesday. I think I, I was, we were lucky. I was lucky enough to know her because, like, on the end of the end of the uh, the end of her life, there she just kind of just had a lot going on. And with muscular dystrophy, your your body just kind of shuts down, and um, lots of surgeries in the in there, lots of things trying to get. You know, she never really let people know that she lived in. She did tell it a little a couple times, but she didn't let people know that she lived in a nursing home and she needed twenty four hour care and. She had a tough time, so she didn't deserve the way that she got treated there, but I think she's in a much better place now, and uh, just glad to know her. So, um, yeah. Also wanted to thank Nikki, who is here on a daily basis and who helps me keep this thing going. Um, we hit... 2200 it was really hard or it was it was a difficult task it seemed like like I didn't think I was going to get there and I woke up on um Saturday morning which was the hope was that I'd get there by Friday and we hit 2200 on YouTube but part of that is her doing the things that she does for me she makes all the shorts for me well I make the shorts but she can make them now <laughs> um, I made her teammate yesterday because it just gave this new feature to me um but she goes through and does all the descriptions. And for those of you who don't know, YouTube's a really tough thing to break on. And um, you have to do all these things with keywords and SEO and all that stuff to get people to watch it. And you have to constantly be posting things and all that stuff. And I know that you don't see that this is something that I'm trying to do full time. But... It is, you know, but I can't, I don't have it, it, even though it's something that I'm trying to do full time, I don't have my full time to dedicate to it because I have a job, I have family, I have a house I got to take care of. And this does not make a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of money yet, but maybe it will one day. And as you know, and if you listen to the show, you know that a lot of times I talk about the very next short, the very next episode, the very no, next little clip could be the thing that blows it up. And I get people sometimes saying, well, you, you're just another white guy with podcast or just, you know, like starting to talk crap about that and everything. And it's funny because it doesn't matter what they think. Um, I have been doing this for four years. Year five, you know, like if you look at the seasons and things like that, um, year five will be starting, you know, in the new year which I haven't decided yet. One thing, you know, like I'm going to keep posting episodes, but I won't, I'm not going to release. I have an interview in the bank. I've got one more I'm doing tomorrow. Got a couple more going. Um, but I don't know that I'm going to release interviews. You know, I'm going to keep doing it the way that I've been doing it lately. Like this morning coffee thing is just me practicing, 
you know, just getting, honing my craft, just getting there over and over again, just a horse rancher over in TikTok. Good morning, my friend. Thanks for hanging out over there. Um, but this is, this is what it is, is, is me trying to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and hoping that something just breaks free. But your five's upon me, and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to do the things that I do. And it's funny because we've talked about this a while ago, and I wanted to just kind of bring it back in because these are these morning coffees are me talking about some of the things that I went through. And Christmas was kind of a tough one, you know. Um, it always has been for me. I've never, I don't know why. I can't quite figure it out um, because I'm kind of a little quirky sometimes when it comes to things. Yes, you do. You need to come hang out. We can talk about that. I know I've asked you to be on before, and I know you're a busy guy, but it would be really fun just to just to chat it up with you. Um, just a horse rancher. <laughs> Great guy. If you guys aren't following TikTok, you should go follow me. All about lifting people up. I love him. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's really what it boils down to. I mean, it's I have a tough time. I don't know what it is. I think that um, when I was a little kid, we used to have um, we used to have big family Christmases. Like we'd have Christmas Eve would be either like with my grandparents and my extended family, or Christmas Day would be one of the two. And so, I have three brothers, and I've always just wanted to have them all in the one place at the same time. But it's been my wife's a nurse, my older brother's wife works in healthcare as well. It's really difficult to get everyone on the same page. Um, as we get older, you know, family members are starting to be a little bit sick. You don't know when they're, how long they're going to live, things like that. And it just makes it tough for them to be around. Um, and so we tried this year to get everyone together in my side of the family. Um, but it didn't quite work out. So I had my dad here, my little brother, my older brother had to hang with his family. Um, and we just kind of, we did it, th we did it that way this year. I think the biggest problem that I have though, is like, I love my kids. I think we give them too much. And I think that I struggle with the fact that I don't think that they think things are as nice as they used to be. You know, I think that they, I, I think like you give them gifts and you feel like they just don't respect them or, or have the kind of, and, and maybe I'm wrong. You know, I mean, it's been a while since I've been 10 years old, but you're like, you sit there and you open their gifts and Seeing Nolan, my two-year-old, open gifts was kind of fun, but he doesn't really get it. Like, he opens up, he gets all excited, he sees it, and then he just kind of goes off, and he does something different. And my daughter, as much as I love her, sometimes I'm like, she doesn't understand, like, money yet, and I've tried really hard to kind of explain it to her and how much things cost and all that, and she still just doesn't get it. So, like, we're buying these things, and I'm just like, I woke up with three Christmas presents under the tree. She had way more. I obviously didn't get them. But I think that it should be more about family and hanging out and doing that stuff. And we just haven't had that. And then with that, a lot of stuff comes because people have different personalities, right? People think differently. People act differently. And, um, you know, my family, my, my little brother and I don't, we get along. We just sometimes there's certain things that we don't see eye to eye on. And then you start talking about it and you start thinking about like all the things that other people have going on in their lives and, how they affect them differently. And it's tough because, you know, he's divorced. He's got two kids that live a long way away. He has a hard time getting in contact with them or being able to be around them. And, and that's tough on him. And then, you know, you never know how people are feeling. And then all you can do, you know, is love them and understand and try to figure out where they're coming from. Because I think like, there's times where I feel attacked when I'm around my family about certain stuff. And it's just the way that they interpret things. It's just different. We've talked a couple of times about like how um, letting other people affect you, right? Well, this is a tough one with family because they walk in and they have these judgments that you can't really change, but you can't really get rid of your family, right? You can spend less time with them or whatever, but I don't really necessarily feel like that's the way to make things happen. Like, I feel like I need to be around them and I can't be my normal, like, Hey, this isn't going to work. You know, you can't do that type of thing. So then I have to go into this mode where 
because other people are down or because other people feel a certain way, it doesn't, you know the truth about you, right? Um, you know who you are. And so when someone says something about you and it's not true, you have two choices. Like you can go on attack mode and go right back at them or you can just kind of ignore it. And I found that as I got older, like the ignoring is a little bit better for me. And I've also found that if you think about it, people are going to say things to you and, and you know the truth. And sometimes they're just saying it because they're having that type of reaction to themselves, right? And I don't think you have to change. Um, for instance, I have a few people who have alcohol and drug problems in my family. And sometimes you feel guilty because you don't have that issue, like wanting to have a drink, you know, um, because you can control yourself, but they can't. So is it tough for them? And they don't expect you to do that, but I think you project that onto your own, onto your own self. And then sometimes people accuse you of things that uh, they don't really know, but they're feeling in their, like they're in their addiction and they want to be able to partake, but they can't. And so they pass it on to you. So it's a tough thing. So, you know, that's kind of what I, that's kind of how holidays have been. I, I really, I really wish that we can get together, you know. The other thing I wish too is that my family and my wife's family, there are certain things that keep us from like getting together like as, as a family. So it's kind of tough because like I want my wife's family to be there. I want my family to be there. I want this big giant thing so that everyone can sit around and enjoy the prime rib that we made or enjoy the turkey that we made and sit around and play cards and you know so I don't know I think that that's what it is but I think like this year I was a little bit better about it but I still like yesterday so well we had this big elaborate plan so we're gonna have we did we and we did half of it like we made tamales on uh, Christmas Eve and it's funny because here's a bunch of white people making tamales. <laughs> so I know that that's like, whatever, that's kind of stereotypical, but you think about it like, here it is. Here's all these people who make tamales. Normally we buy them. We go to the Mexican market, we buy them because they, they make them all the time. They know what they're doing. And it was really cool. We got to make tamales. And it's like, just because you're one at the city, I mean, we make Italian food all the time. Um, you know, or you make, you know, you make all these ethnical food, eth ethnical foods all the time. And just because you, just because you don't, aren't part of that doesn't mean that you can't do that. But typically, like I went and bought carne asada from the Mexican market and we'll buy tamales from the Mexican market because we just, we're not going to make them. But we made them and it's crazy. They always talk about how hard it is. And a lot of Hispanic people have tamales on Christmas Eve. And um, they're like, oh yeah, we all get in this big old party where they're making like thousands of them. And we made it's funny because they make a lot. Like I think we made over 50. We didn't eat them all, but we made over 50. And so tamales, carne asada on Christmas Eve, which Christmas Eve ended up being the 23rd for us because my family was going to leave Christmas Day and we were going to have Christmas Day on our own. Not that that was my plan. I wanted everyone here, but it is what it is. And then uh, Christmas Eve, we'll do prime rib. So, um, or Christmas Day, we usually do prime rib. So we did Christmas Eve prime rib. So we're like a day behind so that we can get everyone. Merry Christmas, Jen. It was great. Um, so the tamales, the tamales turned out great. It was crazy. They were really good. And um, I think, Nikki, I think you said you'd never had one before. So I suggest you do that. I think you can pick them up pretty much anywhere. But that's kind of the difference between West Coast, East Coast, right? Um, I don't know a lot about like East Coast traditions, but we're hanging out over here. And this is the the population is, you know, 25, 30% Hispanic in Idaho and, and it's much more in California and up and down the coast. And so like Mexican food is a really big part of our culture on this side. But like when you don't have a whole lot of Hispanic people over on the other side of the country, because it's not in relationship geographically close, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, they were really good. Prime rib turned out awesome. Um, I had issues with my barbecues because it's so cold here. Um, like it's just, I would just walk out and first of all, Apple maps are never right. The weatherman is never right. There's this one guy in Idaho that does, he actually lives in Oregon, but he, 
predicts the weather for us. He does a really good job. And my wife always talks about him, gushes that he got the prediction right, blah, 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 blah. And it's supposed to snow here, but Apple on your iPhone says, no, it's not going to snow. I just walked out the door and it's starting to spit some snow. So it's going to be snowing today. Pierogies, Philly cheesesteaks over in Pennsylvania. So we did that prime rib, you know, and then um, yesterday what we were going to do is we were going to have, um, uh, we were going to have ham and potatoes and like, since my parents left, my wife's got a sister and a brother and my brother-in-law live in Boise and they were going to come over and have that with us. Barbecue with salads, pavula for dessert. Interesting. We'll have to talk about what that is. There's all these really cool things. So Jen's talking in TikTok and she's, she's got, uh, um, she's in Australia and like, there's so many cool things that we just like, they mean the same thing sometimes, but they don't. So it's always nice to talk about the culture. That's why Jen, you need to come a podcast so we can talk about Australia. Cause I think that'd just be awesome. But anyway, we were supposed to do that. And my wife and I, I ended up, I've, I've got stuff I've got to do, right? Like we've lived in this house for a while and things get overwhelming and I ended up at about two o'clock. I was trying to decide I was either going to come in here and start working on this because I need to finish out the studio, which I didn't do, or I was going to go in and work on the garage. And um, I started going through. There's a box of there's a box of things. There's boxes of things like I've talked about that I need to get rid of, and then there's boxes of things that need to go on the wall in here. And I just have all these things that I need to do, and I just haven't had time. Well, I've had time. I've just wasted my time. So um, I started going through this box of CDs that I had like a tote of CDs. And I, I have a friend who loves them. He still selects them. But now that there's Apple Music, I don't necessarily need the physical CDs anymore. But I did keep one because it had some sentimental value to me. And I kept it. Well, I kept two because I have another one that is signed by someone that is going to go in here. And it was funny because... I started going through them and I started going through my childhood of like how I was listening to this at this time and this at this time. And I know when I got that CD because music's a big thing to me. And I know when I was listening to that and I know where all these things came from. Merry Christmas, Justin over on TikTok. Um, and it was crazy because I was just going through one by one. I remember exactly when I got Eminem's first CD, when I was listening to it on the radio and he was talking about the the radio ads. I drank a fifth of Kool-Aid, Dare Me to Drive and in the CD that's got the little explicit lyrics on it was I just drank a fifth vodka dare me to drive like I mean there, there's all these things that like I was thinking of how that was different than that and I was thinking about where I picked that up I used to have to go where I'd have to go buy CDs how I was like subscribed to BMG all, I mean like it was crazy upon, also upon that and I posted this to my Instagram story yesterday I had a stack of probably like it was probably 10 inches of CDs that were burned. And if you, that will kind of age me a little bit because burn CDs like was a big thing. It was like when Napster came out and you could just take the music and then burn the CDs or you could take another CD. Like I had to make sure every computer I had had two disk drives on it so that I could burn one to the other. Um, so someone bought the CD and I take it and I put it on there, make a copy of it. All illegal. <laughs> But, I mean, what do you do? Columbia House, I did have. So that's the other thing. So Columbia House, BMG, like you get, pay a penny, get 10 CDs. But you didn't realize that you had to pay for the shipping. So in the end, there, I'm sure there's tons of people who had like notices from them saying that they didn't pay for their stuff. It, it's kind of funny. But yeah, like or you have two BMGs or two Columbia Houses so that you could get 22 CDs. And I guarantee you that's how I got a bunch of them. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. So you would do that. And, you know, anyway, I was going through those CDs yesterday and I was taking them out of the case because I had this big old giant case that I'd carry around because you didn't want to carry around every little CD jewel case that you had. And I was putting them in the cases because if they're in the case and I have the CD, then a friend of mine will take them and he'll he'll want them. And it's, it's very important to him to have that kind of stuff. And he's a barber and he's going to trade me haircuts for CDs, which is great because he wants to pay. But anyway, I did that yesterday in the afternoon and then I got done and walked in the house. My tired, my wife was just burned out. You know, the kids are playing with their new toys and this and that. And 
we looked at each other and I was like, do you really want to do that ham today? I mean, what's the, what's the deal? And, um, he's like, no, let's just do something easy. And we had some leftover tamales. So we did some more tamales yesterday and didn't do the ham. So we'll save the ham for another time, which will be good. But anyway, that was kind of how it was going. That was kind of how our Christmas was. But I want to leave you with this because we were talking a little bit earlier, if you've hung on this long, about how other people's opinions affect you. Um, and so we got in some conversations where people were saying some things, and I was just kind of thinking, it's a projection, okay? It's a projection of how they feel. Like, it's Christmas Day. We're having a drink. I'm having a drink. So this is kind of how it was, all right? So my little brother is sober. My dad has not been drinking. My mom, my wife, and I partook, okay? From the time of my parents getting there, like around 1 o'clock until about 8.30 when I went to bed, I had four drinks. And I got accused of being, of being drunk. And I'm like, not even close. But that opinion affected me in a certain way. I had a reaction to it, and I don't know why. And I allowed that reaction to bother me. Um, and I don't know why. But that was kind of it. That's That was the reaction that I had. And I started thinking about it on a bigger level. Not the reaction in my household, but on my life. And how I let that stuff happen. And the problem is that I started thinking about it because I think of things on a different level. This is where my brain goes. It went from, this is what I'm being accused of. How is this person feeling right now? Why are they accusing me of this? How is it a big deal? And you just start going in that direction. And that's how I got out of it. That's how I got it out of my head. Like, first of all, I went defense. Not even close, bud. Nice try. And what your problem is. Two, I started thinking about why they're feeling that way. And it's because they have a problem. And they are probably feeling like they need to partake, but they can't and they don't want to. But it does trigger them to feel that way. How are they dealing with that? And then how did I allow it to affect me? And that's it. Um, it's judgmental when people don't know you're on a certain level. Exactly. And that's the thing. It's like, uh, that's it. Like, we don't know where people are. We don't know how they are affecting. The, and, and then we allow that to bother us. And I have to go back to that. It's like, where are we at? What's going on? This person sitting in my house, they don't do this anymore feel like they need to because they don't feel good about themselves. I have my two children running around. They don't have access to their children right now. Like there can be all these things that are triggering the, the, the problem, you know, with them. And I just started to say, you know what, I'm going to keep doing me because this is who I am. This is how I do things. This is, I'm not going to allow someone else's problem to affect me. Now, does that mean that I don't have empathy for them? No, it doesn't because I feel bad about the situation, but I also have to sit back and think like, what did you do to make that situation? And what are you doing to make that situation better? I'm proud of this person because they have maintained and that's what they need to do. And, and I just don't know if it's enough to say that I do say it, but I don't know that it's enough. And that's a, that's a good one. Justin says, misery loves company. And that is exactly where it goes. Because when people are, are judging you, when people are talking about you, sometimes they're trying to bring you down to their level because they don't like the height of your level. Like, yes, you're doing great. I'm not. What did we do to put the situation in hand? We need to bring this person down. Because if they're down, it's going to make us feel better. But in reality, it doesn't. It just adds fuel to fire. So this is the quote of the day. And this is what I'm going to go with. Sometimes I read you more than one, but I just, I'm looking at this right now. Don't let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. And that's kind of where that situation is. You're at peace. Someone comes in, they try to tear it down and try to make you feel not at peace because they're not at peace. 
And it doesn't mean that you have to cut them out, get rid of them, not love on them. But you have to understand that you don't have to let it affect you the way that they're they're trying to make it affect you. So it's a tough one. It's not easy. And nothing that we talk about here is easy. Um, but I tell you this. My life is ever changing and that every time I make a click one way, it's getting better. I'm feeling better about the situation. I don't let it bother me as much. I don't let what I'm doing affect. I don't let what I'm doing be affected by what other people think. So keep turning that wheel. It might get stuck sometimes and you might need to put a little WD-40 on it so that it'll keep moving. But uh, you can do it move forward thanks again for everyone for being here um i know that i have a few subscribers on tiktok it's funny i know nikki's on there but it, looking at it right here they put zero up there which that is not that because i can look at it and see and it also says people buy subscriptions on there which i don't see where that's at might be a new thing might be me not figuring it out but uh, thanks nikki for subscribing to patreon thank you for helping me get all these shorts out on youtube Awesome help. You do so much for me, and I appreciate it. Um, rest in peace, Jersey girl. I'm sorry for your passing. You're a great, wonderful person, and I hope you're in a better place. Until next time, I challenge you guys to find the shape of your success.